Y'all gonna pray? Yeah. Ain't gonna be no preaching if ain't no praying. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, get on your post now. You better pray. Pray so my man can say something. Say something. Verse 12. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. I like that. I could just go home with that one right there. Immediately she straightened up and praised God. Look at somebody with an attitude and tell them, listen here. Loose your shackles and let them go. Yeah, burr, tell somebody else. Loose your shackles and let them go. I tell one more person, let that stuff go. Let that mess go. Let that stank go. Let them folk go. In Jesus' name, loose those shackles and let them go. Now y'all need to get some let it go praise up in here. Let it go. You may be seated, you may be seated, you may be seated. It's, it's, it's time to take them shackles off your feet. Today is the day to make your calling and election sure. Somebody give God some praise and holler freedom up in here. Somebody holler freedom. freedom. You need to be emotionally free, mentally free. Lord knows you need to be financially free. Hit somebody and say no credit cards this season. Pay cash or don't get it. That's sermon number one. Now we can move on. Some of y'all to clutch your pearls. Oh my goodness. No. Don't you take out no account, no nothing else. If you can't pay for it, they don't get it in Jesus' name. Some of y'all, he better mind his own business. We'll be broke then if you want to. As for me and my house, we're going to fly free. The devil does not want you to walk free in your destiny. So he employs the fiery darts of the enemy wilds, temptation, guilt, condemnation, your emotions, crazy people, addictions, situations, habits, your thought life, your love life, to keep you bound and strapped. Y'all don't hear me. And, but God is saying today is the day to take the shackles off of your feet. God says that he's getting ready to loose you from stuff that has been holding you for far too. Oh, you ought to give him some thank you right there because he promised it. Our text helps us see how Jesus takes the shackles off of our lives. Can we walk it through now? Up until this time, Jesus has spent a whole lot of time trying to help audiences discern the times. He's trying to tell them what time it is, and he doesn't see, they don't seem to get it, so even Jesus is getting frustrated. Look at your neighbor and ask them, what time is it? Uh, Jesus said, look, you can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but you can't discern the sign of the times. He says, you need to make a decision. He says, either I am Lord and the Son of Man, or I am not. Whether God is Lord or if he's not, tell your neighbor, you need to know what time it is, baby. Quit tripping. 
So Jesus, still trying to get the folk to figure out what time it is, here in Luke 13, verse 10, he's teaching on the Sabbath, the last recorded time that he teaches in the synagogue, and it says in verse 10, on a Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there. Here on a Sabbath, here on a Sabbath, in the synagogue, Jesus is teaching. But Dr. Luke says he's there on the Sabbath. Jesus is teaching. But what you need to get clear, this guy who loves to be particular, is that there was a woman there. Wait a minute. Jesus is teaching. It's the Sabbath, but a woman is there. A sister is there. A homegirl is there. A queen is there. A round the way girl is there. Oh, y'all need to hear me. Somebody holler shackles off my feet. But the first thing that this, this, this wonderful uh, scripture is teaching us is that release requires intention and attention to your position. Hear me real good. It requires intention and attention to your position. You and I must take care to tend to our position, especially if you're dealing with one or two shackling situations. Is there anybody in here that has at least one situation that's been bugging you for far too long? Tell somebody, I got more than one. I got at least three. Maybe five, maybe 15. Oh, y'all need to hear me. But God says it's time to get rid of them jokers in the name of Jesus. Not only was Jesus there, but the Bible says she was there. Even though she had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. Good God. The King James calls it a spirit of infirmity. According to the Vines Expository Dictionary, uh, in the Greek, the word is asthenia, uh, which means a want of strength, meaning she was in a weak space, but she needed and wanted strength. Hear me real good. They call it a spirit of infirmity. Uh, they attribute her condition to a satanic spirit, even though it was manifest in the natural. Some, not all of the stuff you're going through, ain't just a natural situation, but it's the manifestation of a spirit that's been hanging out far too long. Oh, I'm going to turn some of y'all into some exorcists up in here. That's why I got my collar on and some oil, because we might need to eject some suckers from your life this morning. Oh, y'all think I'm playing up in here. Now, 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 see, in the natural, for smart folks, the doctors might today diagnose it, diagnose it as ankylosing spondylitis, a progressive inflammatory disease that is characterized by inflammation, arthritis, stiffness, pain. It affects the spinal column and the vertebrae, which consists of the bones of your neck and your back and your pelvis and your spine. All of the stuff that holds your rib cage in place and your nervous system follows and keeps your organs in place was malfunctioning. She was stricken by paralysis. She wanted to get up, but the girl couldn't get up, and it had been going on for 18 years. The trippy thing for me is there was no Tylenol. There was no Aleve. There was no aspirin. There was no Maltrin. Some of y'all can't get through with your little headache if you don't have no Tylenol extra strength. Add a little bit of leave up on that. Some of y'all can't get up out to bed in the morning. Oh, y'all need to hear me real good up in here. And it wasn't for 18 months. Baby, it was for 18 years. 18 years, the woman was crippled. 
18 years, she was bent over. 18 years, she was suffering with limited mobility. 18 years, she couldn't look up. 18 years, she couldn't straighten up. It wasn't like she was lazy. She tried to straighten up. But the Bible tells us that she could not straighten up. Have you ever tried to fix something that just wanted to stay broke? You ever tried to rectify a situation, but the partner you was working with didn't want to help rectify the stuff? Oh, yeah. You ever wanted to heal something, but it acted like it wanted to stay sick? Oh, y'all need to hear me real good. She was bowed over in no wise could she lift herself up, but check it out. But yet, this woman made her way to the synagogue. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. She was dealing with her issues, but she still came to church. Oh, y'all tripping. Boy, that's some good stuff right there. Somebody holler, man! Because these days, if it rains, if it snows, if it's a game, there's more people here on first Sunday when it ain't a game than when it's a game. Y'all ain't hearing me. If we tired, if it's cold, if we catch a cold, if it's too sunny outside, it's just too sunny to be inside. You, you don't hear what I'm saying? If, 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 if your toe hurts, if somebody hurts your feelings, we will leave church and not come back for six months. Y'all don't hear me. But yet this woman, in her crippling condition, made it her intention to be in position in the congregation. Oh, y'all need to give God some glory. Look, y'all. It's when you're going through the most that you need to be in here the most. It's when you're going through hell. It's when you need to be in the house of heaven. Look at somebody say, I'm glad you up in here. Because the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves. Uh, together as some are in the habit of doing. We got to stick together. Tell somebody we got to stick together. Y'all, it's amazing to me that when people are going through hard times, they're going through divorce, going through loss, experience the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, it's then that they want to go on sabbatical. When they're dealing with sickness or dealing with disease or folks are tripping in their house or they get embarrassed or they've been betrayed or they failed in something, it's then when they want to step back from God's house as if things going to get better in devil's house than in God. Oh, y'all need to hear me. And then you run into them in the jewel somewhere and you ask them, how you doing? Where you been? Well, you know, I've been going through some things. I just decided I didn't need to take a break from everything. A break from church and God? Well, you know, every once in a while, you got to take a break from them church people. Because them church people get on your nerve. And I had to just take me a break. I said, okay, but you talking about I look all right, but you're looking bad. <laughs> you look like you've been to hell and back. You need to be in the house of the Lord because out there ain't doing you too. See, we lot of folk. Tell them, come on home, G. You going through too much. Saints. We got a habit of backing up from God when we need to be running to God. If you going through any, I'm glad to see y'all. Some of y'all I ain't seen in a while. Hey, I'm going to close my eyes and wave. You know who you are. Hear me. When you back up, somebody tick you off, you get your feelings hurt, I say something crazy. You need to understand, when you back up, from God's house, it's by enemy design. Tell somebody it's a trick of the enemy. First Peter 5 and 8, King James, you can put it on the board if you like, I appreciate it. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The enemy even comes to church and goes up and down each and every one of these purple rows 
trying to figure out who has a spirit of offense, who they can get rid of, who they can get mad, who can, can distract, because that's how lions hunt. Lions always circle the pack to see who the weakest joker is. And if you've been getting hit on one side and on another, you need to know you under demonic attack. If it's one thing after another, the enemy is trying to wear you down enough so that you get away from the pack. The rest of the pack is drinking and looking, but you from the back thinking, they don't like me no way. All oh, y'all need to hear me. The enemy wants to get you separated enough to make you think you the only one going through what you going through. And don't nobody else care anyway. And as soon as you weak enough, that's when that devil comes and bam, starts taking you out and flips you out enough. Tell your neighbor, you need to come on back, come on back, come on back. Here's what the enemy knows. The enemy knows that a house divided cannot stand. The enemy knows that there's power in agreement. The enemy knows that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. The enemy knows that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything you ask for, it shall be done by your Father who is in heaven. The enemy knows that one can put a thousand in flight. Two can put 10,000 in flight. The enemy knows that when we come together on one accord and pray, the Holy Ghost is released like a mighty rushing wind and deliverance takes place in the, oh, you need to touch somebody and shake them and say, I'm gonna touch and agree with you. Tell them, I agree that you're the head and not the tail. I agree that you are set free. I There's power in the sanctuary, but you have to be in position. Moreover, number two, you got to be in position for reception and impartation. Stay with me. I'm trying to help you get this monkey off your back. Hear me. The primary purpose for being in church uh, 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 is to position yourself to behold the Lord of the church, who is the word of the church. Hear me, say, hit your name and say, stay awake. Back to 13, verse 13, look at it. It says, Jesus, on the Lord's day, is in the synagogue teaching the word. Mm. He's there, and he's teaching the word. See, I think we get distracted, we get tangled up, and stay tangled up because we come to church, but we focus on church activity. We focus on people, their faults, their problems, the tripping preacher, and the wild choir director. So as a result, we don't see the word that we're supposed to see because we're distracted. Somebody get up and put their Baptist finger up, our eyes start following them, what they leaving for. They got to go to the bathroom. Let them go so that they can come back. Oh, Y'all don't hear me real good. But this woman was there in the presence of the Lord while the Lord was administering the word. The word was ministering the word. Where you get that from? Go to John 1 and 1, and y'all put it King James, would you please? John 1, 1, put it on the board. King James, it says, in the beginning, y'all know this by heart, was the word. Please put it on the board. And the word was with God, and the word Oh, y'all better go and preach that thing. No, they feel good. You just lean up into that. Was God. Keep going. The same word was in the beginning with God. All the things were made by him, the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. In him, the word was life. And the life was the light of men. Somebody holler the word. In our text, the word made flesh was preaching the word. You can come to church, 
But preparation for liberation is positioning yourself for the reception of the word. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in church, but it is subordinate to the word. Hear me? It's all about the word. There's a preacher, but it's about the word. There's a teacher, but it's about the word. There's a singer, but it's about the word. There's an usher and a greeter, but it's about the word. Everything that goes on should facilitate the reception of the word. Otherwise, it is not doing its function. If I sing a song and it doesn't usher you to the word and it ushers to me, I'm the star and Jesus is subordinate. But if I'm preaching and it ushers you to me, I'm the star and the word is subordinate. But the devil is a liar. Everything needs to move towards the word. Somebody holler the word. Why the word, reverend? Because you can be in church all your life and go to hell from church if you don't have no word. Turn over to Hebrews 4, verse 12, King James on the board. Thank you. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Why are you tripping so? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And the word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Before I think about doing it, the word can do surgery on my mind to keep me from doing what I want to do. I want to cuss you, but the word said a soft word. Oh, y'all ain't hearing your boy. Real good. The woman had a bone and joint issue. So she was under the word that deals with joint and marrow. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me real good. If you got an issue, if you got a shackle, the remedy to your issue is in the word. Oh, y'all need to hear me. If it's a marital issue, it's in the word. An emotional issue, it's in the word. Them imps on your job, that's in the word. A systemic issue, it's in the word. Violence on the south side, it's in the word. Psychological issues, it's in the word. Your anger issues are in the word. Your daddy issues are in the word. Your health issues, it's in the word. Your money issues are in the word. Somebody holler, it's in the word, it's in the word, it's in the word. Jesus said, it's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema word, the spirit-induced word that he lifts off the page by the Holy Ghost to hit you in the...